bitch. <laughs> Wait, can I even can I even wear this shirt? Hello everyone, bitch, I'm back. <laughs> oh, guys, for real, I have a major cold right now. Even though it doesn't feel like it, I can barely fucking talk. So you're welcome that I'm even making this goddamn video right now. That was such an aggressive intro, and I love you guys, and I'm I love you, and I love making this video. <laughs> so guys, before we even get into this video, I just want to say very briefly that at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about life updates. There's gonna be the 100k giveaway. Away, and there's also going to be me selling some of my old tax. So if you are interested in any of those things, please stick around until the end of this video, bitch, or else bye. I don't care about you if you don't care about me. Leave. Okay, anyway, bitch, welcome back to a new video, you guys. If you want to know what I'm wearing, actually, this is my disrespectful horse hoodie. This is one of my top sellers. You can pick this up on my website, which will be linked down below. If you want to check it out, we also have so many other designs. And bitch, my boss unicorn design, which you guys have been asking about for so long, is launching Friday. And I'm so, so excited about this. So if you are new to my Raleigh Reacts videos, these are videos that I post on a terribly unregular basis. I, it used to be regular, but I'm in the process of moving bitch so anyway it will get back into being every monday wednesday and saturday but right now we don't even know we just we don't even know but anyway these are videos that i make reacting to videos that you guys send me most of them are about animal abuse if you would like to send me a video to react to which these are just my opinion it's just me correcting things that i see on the screen you guys are more than welcome to leave your comments and opinions down below if you agreed if you disagreed let me know i always would love to get discussions going between you guys because it is just my opinion but if you would like to send me a video to react to my email is raleighreacts at gmail Com. We have to do a disclaimer. So let's get into the disclaimer because it's oh, so beautiful. Oh my God. It's just so beautiful. I just love it. You know what? If I could do this disclaimer for the rest of my life in every fucking video, bitch, I would. Okay. These people are not bad people. They just do bad things. So anyway, tell you guys go hate on these people, send them death threats or anything like that. Absolutely not. Which is why I'm making this disclaimer right now. So can we just stop? Leave your frustrations down below, even though they probably deserve it. <laughs> Can I say that? So you guys, I don't know if you heard, but over the weekend, horse racing, you know, just continues to just, you know, you know, you always think that something hits a low point and you're like, oh, they might change. They might get better. No, nope. no, horse racing just keeps going down. They just keep digging and digging. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. They're at the point where they don't even care how badly they're abusing animals. They're just abusing animals. Okay. There was a horse that died the other day at the Melbourne Cup in Australia. And his name was the Cliffs of Moher. And it's just fucking sad. It's just, there's nothing else I can say. The horse racing industry is absolutely despicable. And I think the saddest thing about the horse racing industry is that the only people that are willing to defend the horse racing industry anymore are either people who are in the racing industry or people who bet and participate in it. And I know that there's a couple equestrians on YouTube that just love to, you know, for the rest of their fucking lives defend the racing industry and tell people how great it is when their information comes off of the jockeyclub.com and then they want to claim everybody else is being biased when they're not being biased but they're using information that comes from the jockeyclub.fuckingcom bitch and you're gonna say you're not biased mm. Okay, but I just want you guys to know, for those of you who get really confused on this, because there's so many people who hate the racing industry and so much evidence to support how abusive they are, but then there's these few equestrian YouTubers that want to defend it. Let me just tell you something. Don't ever believe somebody who works in that industry because that's who's cutting their checks for them and of course they're gonna fucking defend it because that's how they're making their bread bitch okay you will defend whatever makes you money until the end of time you know why because people need money to live money literally is everything so whenever you see someone defending the racing industry take a step back and be like hmm Oh, you're an exercise rider? You work with race horses on a regular basis? You train horses for the racing industry? Yeah, no fucking wonder, bitch. No wonder you're gonna defend them. Anyway, let's get into videos now. <laughs> they're doing all their own riding, you know, and they're doing everything themselves. Even um, Jalen the other night, she came out and dived on the kidnappers running down the hill and got slung on the floor. She was no, so no, no, up no, for no, it. No. Call 911. That's not the number here. Oh, do you know what I mean? 
Get away from my horse, you creeps! Zoe! Get away from him! What? That was terrible to watch. That just made me cringe. I think it's great. I, I honestly, it makes me happy to see stuff like this where, you know, actors are actually putting in the time and effort to learn things about horses and do their own stunts with horses and learn how to properly ride and whatever. Um, I think education with horses is the biggest factor right now. And people have just been neglecting that for years and years and years and years and years. And I think it's very important to continue to educate the general public on, you know, riding horses and working with them and not just, you know, having people cut corners all the time, which is what I talked about in my celebrity video, um, is just so many people cut corners and think that they can do whatever they want with horses because nobody cares about horses. And that's a, a really big problem in the equine world right now. Also, for those of you who love Quentin Tarantino movies, Jamie Foxx, who is just such a baller person, and I should have mentioned him in my celebrity video, he owns his own horse and that horse that was in Django was actually his horse and also this scene where he's galloping on the horse bareback he actually did that which is just so impressive to me and it just you know brings a little bit of faith back in humanity that like he actually took the time out of his day to learn how to do that and properly ride horses well enough that he was literally able to fucking gallop a horse bareback holding a gun bitch you know how fucking hard that is to to do period no hey God, people are so brutal. I love it. So first of all, let's talk about this. She cut the turn, in my opinion, way too tight, especially like, you know, sometimes when you're showing horses and, you know, doing competitions and whatever, uh, you train horses to be able to take very tight turns and very, very, very high jumps. Um, so, you know, it, it's not like it's necessarily a bad thing to cut corners and, you know, do very, very tight squeezes to get to the next jump. It looks like she's pretty off balance at multiple points during this and kind of bouncy. Um, like I said, I don't like to hate on equitation, but that's a pretty significantly high jump to be jumping your horse at if you're not quite there yet with your equitation. But ultimately, what looks like happened is she just cut the turn way too tight and didn't give the horse enough enough time to stride his way up to the jump and build up enough to be able to go over it, especially when you compare the size of the horse to the size of the jump. But the problem here is that not only was she not very confident riding up to the jump and she cut it too close, but when the horse refused the jump, which is just blatantly obvious that a horse would refuse that, most horses probably would unless they're specifically trained to do very, very tight strides in that manner. But when the horse refused, she kicked him purely out of frustration. There's no reason to kick a horse when they refuse a jump. Like, what are you going to accomplish by that other than just continuing to piss off the horse? And then that's why the horse bucked. So there's probably some, like, horse and rider issues there. And uh, I don't know. I don't think she should be jumping that high. Shit. Shit. Come here. <laughs> okay, so that's just kind of sad. Like it just brings back a lot of memories to me. It reminds me a lot of when I would, you know, first start training horses that were completely, you know, green. It's very difficult to explain it to people who have never worked with like rescue horses or green horses, but there's this level of frustration that's built up where like, at the end, I don't think she was crying because she was in pain. 
it just sounded like she was crying because she was just overwhelmed and frustrated. You know, when you're working with a 1200 pound animal and it just seems like nothing is ever going the way that you want or you're not getting any progress. And then just one thing happens after another and then you just kind of come to a breaking point. Um, that just kind of sounded to me like what she was going through because I've had same experiences where I just work with horses, even with Link, um, when you're beginning to train them and just everything goes wrong, just one thing after another after another and it just seems like you're not making any progress with the animal and then you just have this one big thing and it, it might not even be that big of a deal it might not even have hurt that bad but you just lay there and you cry just purely out of frustration and anger about like what am I gonna do like it's a boiling point where you're like do I get rid of the horse do I finish training what do I do I'm personally going to say that it was a very stupid thing on her part to be riding an untrained horse on ground like that. Whenever you're training a horse and you're in the beginning stages, I always recommend that you train them in arenas that have like very, very solid ground where if you fall off, you have a little bit of cushioning and it's not, you know, just something that's like, fucking like pine cones and rocks and shit and like hard solid ground because the thing is is that you are going to fall off you're gonna get hurt you have to expect things like that when you're training a horse you have to expect that things like that are gonna go wrong the horse isn't asking you to sit on them you're doing that yourself also training a, a fresh horse on uneven ground when clearly the horse is is not trained enough to even do basic riding even just walking Walking. She was walking the horse and the horse was freaking out under saddle. I'm not gonna hate on her for pulling the reins or whatever because that's just, you know, a reaction. When you are starting a horse, don't ride them on uneven ground like that. Because one of the main reasons why she fell is because the horse bucked and also went on a downhill area. So it's just gravity, man. Just fucking logic. Like don't train a horse on uneven ground or ground that is not, you know, capable of supporting you if you fall off. I think it's quite a big achievement for someone half the size of an average person to get on a horse and just go. <laughs> when people take the mick out of me, they'll either call me a midget, call me small, take photos. With Billy and I did get quite depressed. Um, so, I found horse riding did help. Horses helped it, they helped me relieve it and my mind was on something else other than my dwarfism. I felt like horse riding was always there. In this photo you can see the height difference of me and him because he was 18 hands and I'm about four foot. The most I love about horse riding is probably a relationship between the horse and the rider. Um, relationships with horses don't just click. You have to build the bond. Pandora is a rescue horse, she's quite old. I have dwarfism. I've only really properly been riding for about five years now because they've gone from bad backgrounds and everything. So have I in like school and bullying. They've had to learn to trust someone. To feel like competing against other people that have probably been riding most of their life, much older, more experienced, horses that cost thousands of pounds. Um, and there's Megan with a disability. She's riding a horse that is 25. Pandora's a rescue horse. And I'm just so happy that they found each other because I think they've both helped each other. <laughs> what the? That's just so fucking like sweet beyond belief. Like I want to point out the reason why she's using a crop and the reason why she's a bit more heavy with her hands is because her feet don't go past the saddle. So the horse needs more direction and more communication. It's just so sweet. Like just the whole fucking story in general and like showing on a horse that's 25 in a rescue and like, God, that's just so sweet. <laughs>
I can't. Oh my god. Okay, that has to be our last one. I can't go on. Okay, well now that we got that fucking shit show out of the way. So first things first, I just want to say thank you so much everyone who's been bearing with me. Link and I actually decided to wait to move until the beginning of the year, so the beginning of 2018. There's just a lot of things that have been coming up, and also I'm traveling a lot in December, so I didn't want to also move in December as well. But as you guys know, we did have to back the move a couple times because of complications with Link. We are definitely still moving, but I just found that it was just going to be much easier to just delay it until the beginning of the year. So that's the update on the move. Um, thank you so much for everyone for your patience. I love you guys. You guys know how much I love you. Um, so let's get into the fucking giveaway, bitch. So you guys, I want to come on and say just a massive thank you. Um, the reason I'm doing the giveaway is just to give back to you guys because you guys know how much I love you and it's been really a journey having this YouTube channel and uh, once again I just want to say thank you to all my friends and all the other equine YouTubers on this platform that have just been amazing and super friendly and just great to work with and uh, just a really great community. So I just want to say thank you. I also want to point out that the reason it's taken me so long to do this giveaway is because I was waiting for YouTube to verify my channel and and send me the YouTube plaque that says congratulations for 100,000 subscribers and um, I was gonna put it up for the video and whatever but it turns out that YouTube is uh, not sending me one and they're not going to verify my channel because uh, we don't get along another reason why YouTube demonetizes my videos and um, you know I want you guys to know I don't make these videos for money I make these videos to help animals and to help you guys. And whether you agree with my opinion or not, I'm not on here exploiting animals for profit. I don't make hardly anything off my videos at all. The videos that are monetized are videos that are not related to horse abuse. Um, like I said, I would have done this sooner. Uh, I was just waiting for YouTube to verify me, but they're not going to because I don't follow their guidelines. So. Yeah, they're not going to. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> but anyway, I want to do this giveaway. And first things first, I want to say a massive thank you to Rachel Fail, and she's the designer of rftac.com. She made this halter that I'm going to be giving away. It's a very expensive, very high quality, very well-made halter. It's absolutely beautiful, completely custom made. She also made Link's halter that I just got him, and um, I will link her Etsy store and her website down below for you guys to go check out so this is the halter it is a normal horse size halter it is completely black and gold I will also get a black lead rope to go with this although I don't have it now whoever wins the giveaway will also get a black lead rope to go along with it You can live anywhere in the world. I don't care. I will ship it anywhere. To enter to win this halter and the lead rope for the 100k giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, follow me on Instagram, link on Instagram, and the Shop Raleigh and Link page on Instagram. That's literally it. I will also have these directions down below and the links. I will check. So, and once you have followed the three Instagram pages and subscribed to this channel, all you have to do is just leave a comment down below. Just leave Leave a comment down below and just say one thing that you love about this channel or me and Link or just Link or one thing you hate about us. I don't care. Just leave a comment down below and you'll be entered. This competition will close next Friday and I will announce the winner in the Saturday's Raleigh Reacts video. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into some tack that I actually have for sale right now. If you want any of these items, email me to my raleighlilith.pro at gmail.com. Email right up there on the screen and in the description and make sure to say in your email where you live what products you want and how much you're willing to pay for them because I really don't care if I make any money off of these at all they're all used I just want to get rid of them and whichever ones I don't get rid of I'm going to throw away I'm not kidding so first things first I have these split reins which are pretty old but they're actually very well broke in next I have Link's old halter that says bust a cap on the front of it and then I'm 
also going to sell it with the lead rope. Next, I have this bridalless neck rope. So I actually, this was my original neck rope that I first bought when Link was like two years old and I've always used it for that purpose for riding bridalless. Next, I have this Henry Del Riva bridle or HDR bridle, whichever name you're more familiar with. And then it also has nylon training reins attached to the sides. It does have my old fleece hackamore that comes with it, which this hackamore from my experience has been very gentle, especially working with Link. He has always loved this. I've never had any problems with it. I've also used it on other horses. It does have shanks on it though. So you gotta be a little more careful with it because you know, I'm not a fan of shanks anymore and never really have been, which is why I very much so prefer the star wheel hackamores or side pulls, which is what I use now. But I will say that if you buy this bridle, just make sure to know what you're doing. And if you want to switch out the hackamore, definitely do so, but it will come with the hackamore. Next, I have this entire bag of polos. I've got two multicolored sets. I've also got four lime green ones. That bag of polo wraps is also going to come with the two Superman polo wraps and my two Marvel Avengers polo wraps, which I mean, you can't see the Marvel Avengers because they're kind of inside out right now. Then I have three English saddle pads. This one is a red, white, and blue Roma airflow pad. This one is a Tough Rider, you know, bright pink all-purpose saddle pad. Then I have a more medium-sized saddle pad by Dover Saddlery, which is just a maroon color. Then you guys, last but not least, I have an entire tack box filled with so many grooming supplies. If you're interested in this, these brushes, I'm not gonna clean them, so you will have to do that yourself, but I'm willing to sell this entire thing for like 15, 20 dollars. There's like literally what, five plus curry combs, you know, three plus mud brushes, three plus dandy brushes. There's like four soft brushes. There's just tons of things in here that I don't want anymore. So yeah, really all you're gonna have to pay for is shipping with any of these products. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this entire video. I love you guys. Make sure to check out all of the clothes, which will be linked down below. Like I said, Shop Raleigh and Link. We have the Boss Unicorn design launching Friday. So thank you, thank you so much, all of you guys, for all of your support. You guys know how much I love you. I love you so much. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.